David Klein is the CEO founder and, and I'm sorry, CEO of Click Therapeutics, a company that develops software as medical treatments click. Uh, has created a smoking cessation program and has a number of prescription digital therapeutics in the pipeline, including treatments for major depressive disorders, schizophrenia, uh, insomnia, and chronic pain. Sounds like all the things I need. Uh, David, it's great to be with you. I'm going to talk to you here. Um, listen, uh, years ago at The Atlantic, there was a cover story on The Atlantic by Hannah Rosen, and it was called The Wired Child. And it was about this gap between you know, those parents and their children that were somehow more responsive to digital platforms, the digital world, they were seeing it. And as I've kind of, I've really enjoyed going through your website and looking at the kind of methodologies you're bringing, the treatments, and it's really you know, kind of reminded me of this article that you know, we, we've now become wired people in a way, and there are things that the wired world can do for us that we might not have seen before. It, 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 am I on the right track, and can you share with our audience a little bit about how you're creating new therapies in the software world? Uh, sure. Yeah. Thanks for having me uh, to the Hill and, 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 and Steve. I, I'd say, you know, I, I think that that comment really is right on where we are, you know, entering into this call it wired world. And, you know, that can be that can have some positives and some negatives. I think what we're doing with what we call digital therapeutics represents one of the positive impacts of being in a wired world. I think software has really got to the point we've advanced to the stage where software can actually treat disease. So whether it be in depression or chronic pain or uh, cardio, high blood pressure, insomnia, smoking, um, we're really that advanced and people um, are that interconnected with technology that this software can really be harnessed to actually treat people's disease. So I would, I would agree with that. I don't necessarily think being in a wired world is, is good in all situations, but certainly uh, for, for the revolution of, um, of the way that people treat many different diseases, it, it's a very, very exciting time. You know, in the areas that you're working, which we just laid out, so smoking cessation, um, loneliness, so we're talking to Vivek Murthy in a moment about some elements of mental health. Are you finding, um, how do I put it, the uptake, the use of what you're bringing easy? Are people acclimating to it quickly? Or, and, and, I, and I should also add the billing environment, the kind of classic conventional healthcare world. Do they get what you're doing and is it being accepted? Sure, that's a, that's a great question. Uh, generally, you know, I think things have been moving quicker and quicker lately, especially with with COVID, I mean, somewhat bittersweet for the call it acceptance that people could be treated digitally. I think there's been now widespread acceptance of that of that um, theme, and there's been a real paradigm shift towards uh, people really accepting that these programs uh, can work and that they can get treatment, frankly, in their own home, which is, you know, I think kind of a one of the bittersweet effects of of COVID. I'd say on the billing side, you know, I think I'm I'm in the right place to to call it out. I we you know moving certainly a little bit slower. Again, that's picked up significantly as of late. I'd say that what's really needed is for a um, a really a a digital therapeutics the creation of a digital therapeutics benefit category within Medicare and other regulated health programs. And I think that the evidence is there that these programs are really clearly helping people. And it couldn't come at a better time with, as you know, Steve, many of these diseases uh, being significantly exacerbated by what's going on here with COVID. <clears throat> David, another area that you're doing something very um revolutionary, I think. I, I just have never heard of it before. And if I'm not mistaken, I think you're doing it with Otsuka Pharmaceuticals. We have uh, Kabir Nath, who's the president and CEO of uh, Otsuka USA coming on, you know, just after you. But I think the question is how we can do clinical trials differently. If there's one thing we've seen in um, a lot of areas, cancer, uh, COVID vaccine treatment, et cetera, clinical trials are, are very fundamental part of it. But another dimension to it is reaching into corners of our diversity in this country that we don't often reach easily. And I'm just wondering if you could tell us what you're doing in the clinical trials world. And can we leapfrog over some of the, 
I hate to call it anything else, but the kind of built-in biases that we've had where we haven't been able uh, to reach you know, different ethnic dimensions of this country as much as we should have, and whether a software-based you know, approach to clinical trials is going to help us get out of a very antiquated structure. Sure, that's a that's a great question, Steve. And I think I think that again, once again, this has been a space that's been ex significantly accelerated uh, as of late. Uh, uh, to your point, we are partnered with Otsuka on depression, and they've just been absolutely terrific. We're running together with Otsuka, um, and and actually, verily, a fully remote um, uh, e clinical trial, and it's really one way. Uh, to help us achieve a more diverse population participating in these clinical trials. And, and you know, as you can imagine, when you do have a fully remote, call it e-trial, the people you can reach, they don't necessarily have to be right next to a site and so on and so forth. It really just a much more broad and diverse population. I think outside of just the clinical trials and, and into the real world, the true promise of digital uh, really represents the ability to reach these underserved um, populations that may not have access to, hmm. um, you know, psychiatrists or, or psychotherapists right next door um, that may be in more rural or urban areas um, without as as good access, frankly, as um, other other folks who are in better situations. So. The real promise of digital, I think, is yet to be fulfilled, but it's in that ability to really reach uh, and make a difference in these historically underserved communities. And that's one of one of our core missions, really, is to is to uh, realize that vision. David, can you just you know help um, our audience understand? We just ran a, I think, a video showing some of the platforms, the journaling, and the you know various dimensions of what you do. But I think you know two of the easiest access things to think about are smoking cessation and maybe mental health um, uh, c connections. How does your platform uh, affect? Uh, you know, say I, I, I was one of the spread. How, how can it help me solve my issues? You know, I, tell the human story here, or maybe you can talk about someone you've helped um, move along. Sure, I mean, and, and that's what's so rewarding about this, this job that I have is really, you know, every day almost we hear a different testimonial of someone uh, who will say and, and really give thanks to, to helping them. Um, you know, right now with our first commercial program, Quit Smoking, and that's harder than you think, but we're not entirely reinventing the wheel here, Steve. So, hmm. you know, in a very similar way that a physician or therapist may tell you, hey, Steve, you should, um, you know, tell your friends and family when your quit date is, or if you're craving, maybe try to do a controlled breathing exercise and so on. So actually, clicatine really engages the patients and guides them through what's the U.S. clinical practice guidelines in mm. smoking cessation. What it's good at and why it's been, been shown now to really increase someone's chance of actually quitting is that it's good at engaging patients to those things. So it's one thing for a doctor maybe to tell you, hey, you should get, you know, nicotine replacement therapy. Uh, it's another thing for you to have that, you know, almost doctor in your pocket in a way uh, that's constantly reminding you of that and really driving engagement to that, what we call a click mission of actually getting it, of maybe getting nicotine replacement therapy or, or helping you overcome a craving or telling your friends and family when your quit date is. So, so it's really, you know, the digitization and personalization mm. of already existing U.S. clinical practice guidelines uh, that make this such a powerful tool and really driving mm -hmm. engagement to actually doing it as opposed to maybe just hearing it once or reading about it once. Um, the promise of digital is that it's always with you, it's in your pocket, um, and it can really you know, help enhance treatment significantly and, and, and really treat a patient significantly. David, I've got to sneak in one more quick question. If I get out, you know, one time I was having a dinner with some you know big silicon valley titans and the topic of dinner that night was how to use technology crispr we're going to talk to you know our, our friend from otska in a minute you know on ending on ending death 
And one of, you know, a couple of Washington types in the room said, God, that's going to be, you know, really terrible for Social Security and our entitlement programs. And, and you know, it's just like, you know, the, the, the line was, hey, we innovate in California, uh, you DC types regulate. I'm just interested in this digital space. We have a question from Leslie Krigstein. She's the VP of Government Affairs for Teladoc Health. And we've done a lot in this show um, on telehealth, how important it's become. But I guess the question I have long line, is there an era of regulating all of you that are in this wired space um, that's going to become um, both friend and foe to the kinds of things you're doing? Sure, I think regulation in general is important, right? I don't think you should or really can make claims about uh, treatments or anything of that nature without seeking regulation. Uh, so I think, you know, generally regulating this area will be important. It is important. I think that the regulators to date are, you know, quite aware of the kind of um, iterating nature of software and, and the fast moving kind of agile space that we're in. Um, so I think that this will be and is, frankly, a regulated space. We welcome regulation. We think a lot of these different aspects that that come in the regulatory guidelines from privacy and cybersecurity and really protecting the patient's data um, should be paramount and really is a is a core value of, of ours to put mm. patients first. And so I think that that regulation is there. It's evolving. Um, and it's it's uh, I, I think generally the regulators are pretty understanding of this space and and getting pretty involved. So it is and and I, I believe will continue to be a regulated space. And I, and I think actually that's a very important component mm -hmm. that this that this space be regulated and that, you know, people uh, follow similar regulations as you would with a different kind of medical device or or even in some cases, right. they pharmacotherapy. Well, David Benchuf Klein, this has been fun, um, illuminating, and really uh, look forward to learning more about what you do down the road and seeing how it evolves. Thanks so much for joining us. Co-founder, CEO of Click Therapeutics. Really appreciate you joining us today.